Hi. Hi, everyone. So glad you could join us. <clears throat> we are broadcasting from our headquarters, Floorcraft headquarters here in Ludington, Michigan. If you all could tell us where you're watching from, that'd be great. So today we are making this fun centerpiece. And um, I say centerpiece, but it could actually be separated and used in different parts of your of your home. But oh, and then look at there, it's coming apart. But um, I'm going to show you how to carve this up and paint it up and decorate it for your home. So let's get started. So again, I am um, Dondi Richardson, and we also have Tony on chat. So if you have any questions, be sure to to let her know and we'll do our best to, to answer your questions for you today. So um, we wanna go to overhead. I will show you some of the materials you're gonna need today. For this, I used our um, green floral foam. It's two inches thick, it's 12 inches wide and it's 18 inches long. It's just a standard size at Michael's and they also have it in white. And I did use, you can use either one. If, if you wanna use all white or all green, it really doesn't matter for this, for this craft. Okay, and then you're gonna need some uh, poster board paper or some cardstock paper and a pencil or a marker. And all I did was just literally just drew these out on paper and cut them out. So any shape, any size, you can go online, you can look at some fun uh, pumpkin shapes online and print them out and, and use them as templates. But any size, any shape will work for this. And then I put a coating, uh, kind of a um, hard coating on it, just so it was a little more durable for use year after year. And um, I used mosaic tile grout, but I thinned it down with water. So that's one thing that you can use to, to coat it with, just to give it a nice um, hard coating. And then the other thing you could also use is um, plaster of Paris. Now, plaster of Paris is gonna dry a little faster, so you have to work a little faster, but um, it will work, whichever one you can find. And then for colors, I found these um, Trilon colors. Uh, there's a pewter gray, this uh, Coral Isle. This is matte surf. And then they had these little shortcuts to, um, this is called ripe peach. And this one is cactus green. So just some fun uh, home decor colors that they have out. And then for the florals, how oh, these fun, they almost look dried, kind of fun. Little maybe black eyed Susans or something, daisies or whatever. And then these little, just one stem of those is fine. Or anything. I mean, they could be, they could be any flower, any little fall colored flower will work fine. And then these I like just, just for the color um, and as a little filler, just another texture in the, in the arrangement. And some little orange just for a pop of color, uh, can be any, any flower. And then these I just thought were fun. They just looked like little dried um, wild flowers. So I grabbed a little a stem of those too. So just one of each, but again, any all colored flowers are gonna work for you today. And then around the top of the pumpkins, I just wrapped with um, just any, any jute it can be this, uh, this I used as a little thicker, but you could use a thinner uh, twine or jute, would work fine. All right, so let's get started. So to cut these out, 
already traced my pumpkins on here. You can see I did a little whoops there, but just don't look at that. <laughs> so to cut these out, um, my favorite tool I would say is, this is called a keyhole saw. And I like it just because the, the blade this way is narrow. So it's, it's a lot easier to get around corners um, and it has a nice point at the end. But I mean, a good, just standard um, kitchen steak knife will will do the job too. Um, you're gonna need some scissors to cut your jute. You're gonna need some uh, wire cutters to cut your floral stems. And possibly a few greening pins just to, to secure some of your top um, florals to your pumpkins. You might have a need for those. And greening pins are just simply a U-shaped pin that's used to secure things in place. Those are back in the floral department at Michael's. And you might need a glue gun, um, low temp glue gun if you're working with foam, only because high temp a lot of times gets so hot that it will melt the foam. All right. I'm going to use this other piece as a as a stand to get this one up off the table. So when I'm cutting around the edge, I'm not hitting the table. So what I do is I start at, as, at the edge and all you're gonna do is just start. Now, and just remember with a saw, um, it's really not the forward pressure. So you don't wanna hang onto that saw and hold it really tight and push really hard forward. The saw works best, it's that up and down motion that's sawing through the foam. So if you're pushing too hard, you're really working against yourself. So when you're sawing, just, just not a lot of forward pressure and just make sure you get it, get it going. When you get to the corner, come in from the other side. And meet right at the right where you stopped with the other. Then bring it in again from the edge. Yeah. Stop and then come in from this side. how you meet your other cut. And the other thing you really want to be careful of is that the knife stays 90 degrees to the foam or else the edge of your pumpkin is going to be all crooked. So just make sure you keep that knife at a 90 degree angle while you're cutting. And you turn your piece and just everybody doing? Are we getting chats? I have a couple questions. And the first one was, what size are these boards? Okay. And then the other was, can you use a Dremel or something like that to? Absolutely. So these are, um, are two by 12 by 18. So they're two inches thick. They're 12 inches wide. And then they're 18 inches long. Um, and like I said, you can use either white or green. It doesn't matter for this craft. And, um, and absolutely, if you have power tools, use them. I have a, um, a jigsaw that I use that it, it makes pretty quick, work, pretty quick work of stuff like this. Would you ever use the heated cutting tool? Um, yeah, I mean, we do have our clean cut foam cutter and that is a, it heats up. It's a wand that, that heats up and it actually melts through the foam. Um, with this thick of material, 
I don't usually do it. It can be done. It's just that that tool isn't very speedy. So it's going to take a while to use in, in, the, in the two inch thick foam. Um, I just think a handsaw, especially for this, because it, you kind of, I mean, the look of these pumpkins are a hand carved look. So I don't know. I thought it looked best with a, with a knife. All right, let's get this out of here. Now, if you get in this predicament where you're like, okay, now what? You can just just pop it right through the right through where you left off. Just push it right down in there and start from there. Home is pretty easy to work with. And if you mess up and you go out of your line, don't worry about it because we're gonna we're gonna cut and carve the edges here in a minute. Just remember to keep your up and down motion and not a lot of forward force. Just let the saw do the work. Keep it at that 90 degree. There, and then keep your little scraps because we're gonna use them to, um, to sand inside the little grooves. All right. So in order to get this off of here. In order to get this this nice groove, oh don't pay attention to that. <laughs> um, I'll show you how to how to bevel that foam to make it look like there's actual little pumpkin grooves in it. So after you After you trace your pumpkin, can everybody see in my still on camera? We're going to just draw in a little grooves we have a guideline on where to cut so from this point to this point is a groove and what i found out with pumpkins when you draw a pumpkin look at this this is like an oval can you guys see those lines not really good i'll just draw it with this so the middle of your pumpkin is just an oval. See that oval? So you draw oval and that's how you start your pumpkin. And then and when you want to add more to your pumpkin, you just draw another oval and then draw another oval. So it's basically just a bunch of ovals. The pumpkins are super easy to draw. So then on this guy, this long guy, when I did, when I started this pumpkin, I started with this middle oval and I just made the oval kind of funny shaped. So it started kind of skinny and then I brought it out right there at the end. So then when you do your next oval, you just follow that funny shape. On this one, it kind of goes out, back in and back out. So you just kind of follow that center oval and keep adding to it. And it's just, it just happens. Look, here's this one. Started out with a center oval. And then I just drew 
ovals around it. And then add your stem, of course. Keep up. That's all I did with these. With every one, I just started with the center, figured out how tall and how wide I wanted that center oval. And then you just add to it on the sides. Okay. So here's my center oval. And my two outside ovals. Then you have a pumpkin. And then when we do our, our um, stem, we'll make a funny little whatever up there. All right, so we have this cut out. We have our lines put in. So now you're gonna take your same knife. I'll even show you with the steak knife just so that you can see that it, it does work. So now we're gonna take Instead of holding your knife at your 90 degree, you're going to hold it like at a 45. So like, like about like that to the foam. So you're going to make a little pie wedge basically into the foam. So keep your knife right at about a half an inch out from the line. And you're going to cut in at that angle, but you're going to cut in so you meet your um, tip of your knife ends up right at that line. So just cut. Follow along. All the way to the edge. And then turn it around on this other side, same thing, 45 degree angle. You're gonna come out about a half an inch and you're gonna cut into the line. And just follow along the line. If it wig, if it curves, then follow that curve. And then and there we go. There's one groove, and then I always take it and just make it so that it follows through at the top and at the bottom. And how deep is that, Dondi? This groove is probably, see, can you, can you see maybe kind of, it's not real thick and not real deep. It's maybe a half inch deep. And, and it's up to you, um, you can do it however, trying to get a good, there's a good one. You can kind of see that. So let's do that again. Like I said, about a half an inch away from the line and then your tip of your knife will touch the line or go right to it. You're just gonna follow along. to the end, turn it around, same on the other side. Pull that out of there. All right, and then just to give it a little more dimension, I went ahead and went all the way around. So you're just cutting off just like the corner. Of it. So you're taking off this, this 90 degree corner and just cutting it at an angle. It's just gonna give you a little more dimension, make it look like it's carved out of wood maybe. that just that little bit off the edge is all you need okay 
and it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you can see right here, it kind of wiggled a little bit and went in, but it's a pumpkin. They're not perfect, right? Yeah. All right, and then if you find that this in here is getting kind of gunky and balled up a little bit, that's where you um, can use these little scraps of foam, like little sanding blocks. So just get a nice pointed edge, call it a uh, tapered edge, and just go right back into those grooves. And just rub it and sand them out. And you can use this to, if you have little spots on the side, you like right there's a little spot where I didn't quite meet up. There, let's move it. Let's see. All right. We want to see cutting out again. We can cut out this little one. Maybe. Actually, I can show. I'll use the steak knife on this one. Okay. Now, the steak knife is going to go a little slower because it's not nearly as sharp as the keyhole saw. A, um, a jigsaw, a, I don't know if a Dremel would have, a, does a Dremel have long enough attachments? Do they have two inch thick attachments that would, that would fit through the foam? I'm not sure. But as you can see, a sharper tool works a lot better, but it's not necessary. You can still get the shop job done with just a simple steak knife from your house. All right, and then I'll show you again the, to get the groove, you're gonna go in at a 45 degree angle, come out about, probably on this one, you wouldn't need such a wide groove. So maybe like a quarter inch out from the line and then just cut into the line. And I'm gonna make this groove a little smaller.
So that one's not quite as wide and not quite as deep as the other. Like that. So Tony, do we have do we know where people are calling from? Go back up here. You've got a lot of entries. So let's see. We have South Carolina, Brooklyn, Orlando, Florida, California, Chesterland, Ohio, Montana, New York, Kentucky, Nevada, Virginia. More from Virginia, Georgia, Texas, and Washington. Wow. All over. All right, how are we doing so far? Do we need to see any of that? Does everybody have the cutting and Carving down. We have someone that just joined in and asked where to get a template. So if you want to just explain how you do it. Oh, sure. So I was mentioning that any any size, any shape pumpkin is going to work good for this craft. And um, I actually just drew these. And the best way to draw a pumpkin is just to start with an oval. And then you draw a partial oval on that side and a partial oval on that side. And then you go again and you go again. So it's just a bunch of ovals. That's all it is. Super easy. With this one, it's just a long skinny oval. And then I just added a bigger oval on each side. And then of course you draw in your, your stem. But that's the best part about this craft is, I mean, any shape, any style pumpkin is going to work for you. This one, I just did a long skinny oval with two partial ovals on the side. And then this one, the only difference that I did is when I did the oval, I just kind of flared it out at the bottom. So I just made a funny looking oval. And then when you make your outside ovals, just follow that shape. So make this outside oval a little fatter at the bottom, like the center one is. But otherwise, I mean, you can find pumpkin patterns, free pumpkin patterns to print online would, would work just as, just as well. And then all you'll do is draw your template onto your foam. This is a two by 12 by 18 foam. You can use white or green. And then you're gonna cut it out with either a, like I said, my favorite tool for this was the keyhole saw, just because it's narrow, it cuts curves really well and it's pointed at the end to, to insert in. All right. So, Sorry about that. So I took my mosaic tile grout and I took some out of here. I poured it all back in, but I took some out of here and I put it in a bowl and then I added water so that it's like, I'd say like, like thick pancake batter maybe. Um, just because this stuff is really thick and it, it doesn't spread real nice. So just get some out of there, add a little water to it. It does take a little bit to mix it up, but it will mix with water. So then just brush it on and you're gonna wanna brush it on pretty thick. And this is gonna harden. And um, protect it from getting dinged up. You know, if you wanna use it year after year. I'm sure you're going to, because it's going to turn out fantastic. Do we have people crafting along today? Yeah, 
shared yet. If they're crafting along or just watching to do this later. Well, let us know if you're crafting. Do you use the two inch so that it can stand by itself or could you use another size? Um, I use the two inch so that it's thick enough to be able to put the grooves because I actually um, like those. I did them two sided so that if you put them on your table that both sides of your table can can see it. And if the foam is too thin, then when you put your grooves in, you're not going to have a lot of room and it's going to it's going to make it um, it's going to weaken it. So you have to have a little little bit of thick enough foam that that it's still going to be sturdy after you cut the grooves on each side. And really, we only have I mean, I'm not sure that Michaels has a half inch foam, but we have it in one inch and I think there's a one and a half not in this big a sheet, but um, the sheet, this size sheet only comes in a, in a one inch size other than this two. So this is just the better size. Would this hold up to weather for outdoor use? Sure it would. Yep. Um, that all depends of course on the, on the florals that you used, but um, the foam in this tile grout would definitely be fine for outside. So that's all I did. Just took this and coated the whole thing with with tile grout and let it dry. Getting little bumps. We had a question about whether or not you would recommend carving a groove for dimension at the top near the stem or not. Yep, we kind of did. Um, you mean they might mean right here. Um, the only reason that I didn't worry about that is the um, the jute or the twine kind of covers it. So you'll bring your jute, you'll bring your jute down and cover all kind of all of this. Um, let's see if I can get. We'll see where the jute comes down and that kind of sticks up past the foam. So I didn't really worry too much about the top of the. <laughs> Try to get it back together here. Yeah, I didn't worry too much about the stem because we're going to cover it with jute. But if you were just going to paint it, yeah, you would probably want to make a groove there to to bring it out to, so it stands out a little better. All right, you guys kind of get the idea, right? Just gonna cover this stuff with this watered down tile grout. Is that easy to get off your hands or would you recommend wearing gloves? Um, gloves are always a good idea. It does wash while it's wet with soap and water, but you know, gloves are a good idea. What would be a close alternative if, if they don't have tile grout? A close alternative, actually, I'm going to show you what I used on the one that I'm going to paint is um, Plaster of Paris. That will give you a nice hard coating. Uh, the only thing with that is it doesn't have, it has a lot faster dry time. So while I was brushing my pumpkin, it was already starting to kind of stiffen up on my brush and I had to wash my brush out. So that's the only thing with the plaster. And I guess if you, if you watered it down a little bit more and used it a little a little more watered down, maybe it wouldn't dry as fast. I'm not really sure. Okay, well, I'm gonna set this aside. We don't so here's one that I that I did with um, mosaic tile grout. 
or I'm sorry, <laughs> with um, Plaster of Paris. So, I mean, it's very similar look. Um, you're still gonna get the durability. It's gonna, it gets kind of hard and it, so you can, um, it'll be a little more durable from, for putting in a box and storing from year to year. And same thing, I just thinned down the plaster. I just brushed it on with a brush and let it dry. So that's the step. So we cut it out, we put the grooves in, and now we are going to try to paint this on set without getting paint all over the studio. <laughs> Don, did that ratio for water for the plaster of Paris? So you just, you don't really measure it. You just get it to like a thick pancake batter texture. Yep, I did not measure it. Um, it says to put the water in the bowl first and add the plaster. So I would start out with not a lot of water and just keep kind of playing with it until you get. And with the plaster, I, I, would, I would mix that a little thinner. I would do it like a thin pancake batter. All right, so you're gonna want some gloves on for this step because we're gonna do some spray painting. And I just kind of played around with these colors and of course you can paint them any color that you want. But um, this one I actually did. Uh, what's the dry time for the tile grout and the pier? Um. I let them both dry overnight only because if they're a little bit damp and then you go to paint it, you're, I think it must be the moisture in the product and it kind of makes the paint crackle. So it's best to, I mean, if you have the time to let it dry overnight or in a fan, if you have a, a fan that you can put on it, but you wanna make sure that it's totally dry before you start painting. So to get the, the little bit of um, detailing in the grooves, I just painted those with a different color. And actually with this pumpkin, with this one, I, um, I did the, this coral on the entire bot, on the entire pumpkin. So an uh, undercoat of this coral. And then you can't see real well on camera, but it lets that pink kind of show through. And then when you put the, um, oh, what's this one again? The cactus green over top, it just kind of, it makes it look like those, um, like those muted pumpkins that you see at the, at the stores now at the market. So a little bit of pink underneath kind of shows through that green. And I did um, the grooves, I did a little bit darker pink and on the edges I did a little bit or coral, I'm sorry, uh, just to give a little more dimension. So shake your can real good. And then if we can go to you. I'm going to Mr. Nate. Can we go to can we go to front view? And Dondi, we have some people asking if you could do crackle paint or chalk paint or anything like that. So really it's what people prefer. Absolutely. You can use any paint. You can use brush on acrylics, um, sprays, you can, I mean, you name it, you can do it decorate it any way you'd like. And if you use acrylics, you, you probably wouldn't even really need to seal it with the, I mean, unless you want the strength, but, but the acrylic paint is gonna put kind of a coating on it too. So you might not even need to coat it if you're gonna use acrylics. It's just, I like to coat foam um, before I use spray paint because it seems to me that like a year or two years, if you're going to use this year after year, 
um, spray paint directly onto the foam. After a while, it gets kind of brittle and it wants to like flake off. So that's why I like to seal my foam before I spray paint it. So Miss, am I am I on front view, Nate? I'm not sure where Nate is. Can you guys see? Can you see me front view, Tony? Nate. Okay. Well. Nate, could we, sh there we go. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about so, that. I had some severe technical issues I had to work no, through, but okay. I got through I it. My apologies. Yeah. So all you're going to do is just take your coral and just follow along. You don't have to worry about being too close because um, the foam is coated. So you're not going to hurt the foam at all. So go ahead and spray. Right in there, and then a little on the edge. So you have like that so far. And then I took the cactus green. And then you kind of go over these uh, raised areas with the green. And just play with it until you until you like the look of it. If you want more green and this not as defined of a groove, you can add a little more green and make it a little less loud, but that's about it. We're just um, just painting in those lines, basically. And then um, here's a little one that I cut out. I don't know, is there another color? Do you want me to show you this blue? You can do this one blue. Just make sure you take it up real good. And then this one, I think I did it pretty much all blue. And then I just highlighted a little bit with gray. So. I know I want to open a window. be it though. And then I used this pewter gray. And this one, if you hold it kind of um, kind of at an angle like that away from you like that, and you can get the gray kind of just on the top. If you want, so it looks like it's just a little bit frosted on the top, or you could do the whole thing. It's up to you. So you can get that gray look on there with the blue in between. That's pretty much it for color. Um, just real simple. And if you if you get it done to here and you're like, geez, I don't, 
I'm not so sure I like that. That's what you can do. You can paint it right back over. Just start over. No big deal. All right. Now, does anyone want to see any of those steps again, or should we start decorating? We have a question if you do both sides. So that's really up to the person if they want it double sided or single. Yep. Um, so what I said before was my front view or my top down. Okay. So what I said before was um, if you're going to use it across in the center of your table as a centerpiece, you're going to want to do both sides because, of course, you're going to want both sides of the table to see your masterpiece. Um, but if it's going to be like on a buffet table up against the wall and you're not going to see the back of it, um, you could just maybe even just paint it a solid color and not put the grooves in. Um, would would work just as well. Looks nice. So let me show you the how I did. So for the um, for the top, all I did was oh, and I look in there. I'm gonna show you this. So another idea. This is Mod Podge. Uh, this is just um, tissue paper, like gift gift wrap tissue paper. And see it it decoupages right into the grooves. It's super simple. I didn't coat the foam at all. I just went ahead and cut out my grooves and put this right on raw foam and then just glittered the stem. So that's just another fun idea, another fun way that you can decorate your pumpkins and you could still um, put flowers in it. And then another one I did, I just did this one with just flowers. Now I didn't do the sides yet, and so it's not complete, but just to show you that you can um, just cut stems to about inch and a half, two inches and insert them into the foam, make a fun pattern and have a nice floral pumpkin. Or you could even use like all one color and um, add a little stem. And this is just on a little, little ball actually. But again, it's just little flowers cut about one and a half inch stem and insert them in with little pumpkins. So all I did, just run a, pe a bead of glue and stick on your jute. And then I just kept going back and forth, weaving back and forth. So you put another thing of glue And just back and forth until you, until you get all of your stem covered. And you can, I mean, you can go around the other way too. You can wrap it around this way. It's probably a little quicker. I just thought that this kind of looked, you know, how a pumpkin stem is kind of, kind of, I don't know, grooved almost. So this kind of gives it that natural look, I thought. And then after I got all of these on here, I just went around the top edge of the this top of the pumpkin stem with a little spiral of jute. So that's it. You just go Keep going back and forth and back and forth. Until you get your stem all covered. 
and it's going to look something like that when you're finished. And of course, you're going to go all the way around unless you're doing it one sided and then you would only need to do it halfway around. All right, since those aren't dry. So all I did to do the flowers, so we're gonna pretend like these are the two that I just did. <laughs> Presto changeo. So literally all you do is just snip your, snip your pieces, Let's see. To about mm, inch, inch and a half, and they just literally poke right into the foam. Now you can add a little, little bit of glue to secure them in if you need to. Um, but I took some of this, this longer vine. So if you if you don't have this exact um, stem. That's fine. Just find anything that's kind of fun and and um, viney, and that's what I use to bring out from the stem and um, secured all these in with glue. So you just cut them to the size and just secure them in place right into the foam. And then, like I said, you can use these separately. You could put um, you could put two together, you know, at, at one side of your home and put two together on the other side of your home. But they all kind of hold together. Now this one, I put a few stems coming out of this little pumpkin and then a few on the right hand side of this taller one with a few on the stems. And then to secure them together, if you want to use them all together, I just put a uh, toothpick in between the two pieces and glued them in. And you can see I had them all glued together once, but I pulled them apart so that I could show you guys they can be used separately. And then that one went up there like that. And they can be arranged any way that that you want, of course. You can make as many or as few pumpkins as you'd like. But that's about it for how I how I put them together. Do we um do we have any questions? You want to see any of those steps again? All right. Well, I think if we don't have any questions, I do have um I do have the upcoming classes right handy if you guys want to see those. So here it right the wreath is next right. Huh? Oh. One second Tony's going to get it for us. <laughs> All right, so this one is the one that's coming up next. And this is just, um, I'm gonna show you how to put this together. It's just a half ball, 10 inch half ball, a little two by four disc and some mesh and florals and just a fun new idea to put on your door uh, instead of a wreath. And then what's the one after that? The one after that is this fun witch wreath. So I'm going to show you how to use the fall wreath for the beginning of the year and then how to add the witch when it gets closer to Halloween. So a 
couple fun upcoming projects for you guys to sign up for. Yeah, so you can find those at michaels.com and go to the class schedule and you can see all of our upcoming projects. All right, everyone. Again, thanks for joining us. And I guess if there's no further questions, we'll, we'll say goodbye. All right, thank you. Bye-bye, have a good night.